Hello everyone and welcome to Zabbix series. My name is Artur Slontons and in this video we are going to be talking about calculated items. We will discuss four examples, from simple sum calculations to aggregations to more complex aggregations across different host groups. Let's go! Alright, so we will start on this here host Linux server 1 and we are going to start with creating very simple calculated items just so you can understand the syntax. So you can see on this host I have incoming and outgoing traffic over here items for the loopback interface and the primary interface that I have over here. So let's start by creating an item that will calculate the total traffic. So I have incoming traffic, outgoing traffic and I need total traffic. So let's give it a name, total traffic for the interface name on Linux server one. Then let's select the type. The type over here needs to be calculated item. This covers both calculated and aggregated items. So if before we had separate types for calculated and aggregated items, nowadays calculated is what we use for both of these aggregations and calculations. Then the key, the key can be an arbitrary selection. Um, it's completely up to you how you how you define it. Um, what I'm going to use is net if total and then the name of the interface as a parameter over here. Type of information is numeric. Yes, that's what we'll be calculating, incoming plus outgoing traffic. And now let's get to the formula. So I will be taking the last incoming traffic on this host. So double slashes over here mean that we are analyzing data on the current host. Net if in and the name of the interface like so and close the brackets over here right plus the last value received for outgoing traffic on the same interface on the same host once again the two slashes represent that we are analyzing the data on the current host and then the outgoing traffic item net if out interface name and then close it so remember, these items, they need to exist, right? If they don't exist, we will have an error message. Then I will also define units, BPS, update interval can stay as is, and I'm also going to populate tags over here. I will add the same tags as my incoming and outgoing items have. So I will use the component network, and I will use the interface and then the interface name tag like so. All right, so once again, looks fine, last incoming plus last outgoing, numeric type of, informa uh, type of information, the item type is calculated, everything looks good. So now let's scroll down and let's add it. So there it is, right? We are taking the incoming and outgoing traffic, summing it together. And now let's wait a moment so the item gets loaded in the configuration cache and then a bit more until the initial check is performed and then we will navigate to latest data and we will see what sort of value are we getting here. All right, and I have moved to latest data over here and filtered by my Linux server. And here I can see I have bits received and bits sent. And then the total traffic is over here. And if I hover over it, I will see instead of uh, the units being applied, I will see the raw value like this. Okay, and it seems approximately to be correct. The thing is, you always see some deviation in this case. Well, not always, but most of the time, because the total traffic item gets calculated at a different point in time than the incoming and outgoing traffic gets collected. So maybe it's using a previous value, for example, bits received, which is a bit different since bits received was updated after this item was calculated. So essentially, even though the update interval is every minute, the point in time, they don't happen at the same point in time, these calculations and updates. So right now over here, I think this looks correct, right? So it means the total traffic item picked up the latest bits received and bits sent values. So they were updated. Essentially bits received and bits sent was updated first, then the total traffic decided to, yeah, it's time to calculate a new value. And now this looks to be exactly the sum of bits received and bits sent. So there will be some minor deviation, but in most cases it doesn't really matter that much. All right, so let's move to our second calculated item. 
So for my second calculated item, I would like to do a 10 minute average of the total traffic on the host. So we already have the total traffic item over here. And now let's do a 10 minute average. This will teach you how to work with different types of functions. So let's once again, scroll up and click the create item button at the top right. First, let's give this a name, 10 minute average total traffic on a host. Once again, the type will be calculated. So we're still kind of playing around with simple, simple calculated items over here. The key, once again, arbitrary, I will use net if average, if average, and then the name of the interface in the parameters, type of information numeric, just like incoming and outgoing traffic. And now let's use the formula. So I'm going to use average. Then once again, I'll be using items for calculation on this host. That's what the double slashes mean, referencing this host on which we are creating the item. And then I will use the net if total item that we created previously in the previous step. So I'm doing a calculation on a calculated item. And then I will specify as my parameter 10 minutes. So average of total traffic over the last 10 minutes. We can once again specify units BPS. We can specify tags over here. It's again component network and interface and interface name. These will be relatively simple example. Of course, you can include this in your low level discoveries and then use low level discovery macros and things like that to create more of an automated logic for calculated item creation. All right, once again, let's add this and we have added it and let's wait for a moment and then move to latest data and see if the item is working, if there are any error messages, if the value is being calculated. All right, and here in the latest data, we can see that the item is indeed collecting data. It's getting the 10 minute average total traffic on this here host, which is right around 138 kilobits per second, which yeah, seems, seems to be fair enough. It fluctuates quite a bit right now. We can see it's a bit more. Right now, at this moment, the total traffic is at 419. But if we open a graph, we will see that, yeah, it, it used to be way below 100. Now it's sort of spiking because probably we're working with the front end, right? So it will, it will go up over time if it continues the trend. So right now it's at 138 based on the fact that it was way below 100 a moment ago. Now it's over 100. So there we go. That's our second item. So we have learned how to work not only with the last function, but we have learned that there are other functions, for example, minimum, maximum, average, and so on. So next up, let's do a sum of incoming traffic across all of our interfaces, no matter how many interfaces we have, because currently you can see we have two interfaces, right? We have this here and we have the loopback interface. So how would we go about summing all of the, for example, incoming traffic, no matter how many interfaces we have? Do we have to write them manually or is there some other way around it? So let's find out. Once again, I have moved back to my Linux server one and I will scroll up, click on the create item and we'll be creating our third calculated item. This one a bit more complex. Every item that we create is more complex than the previous one. So this will be the sum of incoming traffic on this host, right? Once again, it will be calculated item, calculated. Key, once again, arbitrary. I will use net if in total. And I will use the formula. So the formula that we're going to use will be sum. We will be summing. And then we'll use a for each function last for each. That means that we'll be summing the last value for each item. That's what the for each stands for, matching our criteria. And our criteria is what comes next. So let's open up our brackets. We will be analyzing all items on the current host. We can also use a wildcard. In that case, we'll be analyzing item, items on all of our hosts within Zabbix, right? We'll try to find the item key pattern 
across all hosts. But currently, since I'm not using a wild card, it'll be only on the current host. And then I need to provide the item pattern. So net if in, and then the wild card in the parameter, and we can close our brackets. So the wild card means that uh, whatever interface is specified here, whatever parameter is specified here, it will be grabbed by the for each function. So we'll be summing last values for each incoming traffic item on this here host. I have to be careful with the wildcard. It can be used in parameters like so, but it cannot be used like this, right? I will zoom in a bit. So it cannot be used like this over here. That won't really work. You will get an error message. I'll scroll down and I will show you. If I try to add it, yeah, I'm getting an error message, right? Invalid parameter. So, but it will work in a, in uh, the parameter of a key like so. This means that we'll be grabbing all of the items with all of the parameters in them as a part of the for each function. In our case, all of the interfaces, because for incoming traffic, the parameter that we specify here, one of the parameters is the interface. All right, so let's provide units. Let me zoom out. Let's provide units BPS, update interval one minute. Um, let's go back to tags and once again, let's add some tags. So component network, and this isn't really related to a single interface per se, so we can leave it as is. And let's add the item. And now let's wait for a bit. And in a moment, we will navigate to latest data and see if all of our traffic across all of the interfaces has been picked up. Okay, and we're back in latest data once again, and we can see some of incoming traffic, 54 kilobits. And if I take a look on my first interface, it's about 12 kilobits. And on my uh, local host loopback interface, it's 41 kilobits. So yes, that looks to be approximately correct. Once again, the calculation of this here calculated item happens at an arbitrarily chosen point in, in time every minute. Well, I mean the starting sort of point when it happens every minute so they don't happen at the same time as the other items. They're not scheduled. They just happen sort of a bit arbitrarily, the calculations. Uh, that's why this value could be representative. It's not necessarily um, the exact sum of current last received value of incoming traffic items that we are summing here. Okay, so that's that. Now you know how to sum items by using for each functions and wildcards. In previous versions and older versions, this wasn't possible, so this fulfills a very important use case, yes? If a single host, for example, represents a switch of a customer or something like that, you can now calculate their total traffic for some time period, for example. Okay, now let's move on. And for our last calculated item, we will be working with a different set of hosts and items. We'll be working with website visitor numbers, and we will learn how to use filters in our for each functions based on host groups and tags. All right, so I have moved to my host section, configuration hosts, and I just wanted to show you the set of metrics of items that we'll be working on and the hosts that we'll be working on. So I have uh, four really simple website hosts representing different websites that I have in my company. Um, and you can see based on tags over here, right, on the right side, three of them are in production. So bidding platform, company main website, and online store website are in deployed in the production, while the online store website QA host is deployed in the QA environment. And all of these also belong to the same host group. They belong to the websites host group. And what we wish to do here, if we open items, we wish to calculate the total number of visitors. So each of these hosts has a number called visitors, and we wish to calculate the total number of visitors for production websites only. Right, so how do we do that? Let me move back to configuration hosts. And I have already created a host that will generally represent our website statistics. Right? It, it won't represent a single endpoint. This host will have aggregated data stored on it. You could do it on any other host, but I think it's a bit more understandable if you have a dedicated host for aggregations. So let's click on items and let's create a new calculated item. So once again, the workflow is very similar. I will give it a name, total 
uh, number of visitors for production websites. So far, so good. Type calculated item. Key, once again, completely arbitrary. Visitors total. And it will be a numeric non-float number. It'll be a whole number. So, because we cannot have eight and a half visitors, right? So that's perfectly fine. As for the formula, once again, we'll be doing a sum. So sum, once again, last for each. But this time things will be a bit more different. So first off, I will specify that I'm analyzing instead of a single host, I will be trying to match the pattern on all of my hosts in Zabbix. That's what the, let me zoom in, the wildcard over here represents, right? And then I will define the key visitors. That's the key that we used for the visitors item. And then I will type in a question mark and I will specify that I wish to analyze hosts in host group. Group equals websites, right? So that already sort of includes only our website uh, hosts, hosts representing our website based on this here host group. And then I will close this part, type an AND clause, and also filter these out by a tag. I will include only tag equals environment production. Right? And this excludes our Q&A uh, host, the one that we used for QA environment. Instead, it only includes the production hosts. And then we can provide units. In this case, I think it's self-explanatory. Units will be visitors, just a number, we can leave it out. So once again, sum for last value for each item, matching all of the hosts filtered by group websites and tag environment production. So within all of the hosts, we'll find hosts that have, well, not hosts, but uh, items that have the group that belong to hosts in group websites and that are tagged with environment production. In this case, this here item will inherit the tag from the host. All right, and now let's zoom out. Let's try adding this. And let's give this a moment once again to get picked up in the configuration cache, and we will test this out in a minute or so. All right, and in the latest data we can see that the website statistics host provides the value for total number of visitors on our production websites, which is nine. And if we take a look, our online store website has had one visitor. That's the last value that it has received. Bidding platform website has had six visitors. Company main website has had two visitors over here and two plus six plus one equals nine. So that indeed is correct. While the QA website over here, right, it has had 13 visitors, probably our dev team poking at it, but it did not get included in the calculation based on the tag inherited from the host. Once again, if I go to, for example, my online store website, configuration, tags, I can see tagged environment production, while the this here QA host is tagged with environment QA. And once again, let's remember that our item we go to configuration, click on it, go to config. It analyzes and calculates items only tagged with environment production belonging to the group websites. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. There is much more to learn when it comes to calculated items and aggregations. Check out our documentation for a full list of available calculated functions, calculated history functions, aggregation functions, much, much more. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them under this video. And if you have suggestions for any upcoming videos, a topic that you wish for us to discuss, do let me know. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.